You see, I'm not interested in chord changes, playing chord changes. I don't need that. I work on concepts. You know what I'm saying? Very uh, subtle ideas. The sound that you're getting on the horn and how you're playing it, the manner in which you're playing the music, equals a spiritual reality. This reality, reality exists somewhere in the subtle worlds. It's like you're trying to cognize uh, a, a, a world of, of, of sound. What's going on, bro? How you doing, man? Good. Oh man, I'm so so. You know, David man. was what what we we call back then the yeah. real deal, a very strong, uncompromising sound, meaning that he he was cutting the fat off the music and getting right to the the essential essence of the sound. When I first heard him play, it was in a practice room in, in the Berkeley School of Music. And I heard a tone. In this music that many people call jazz, it's all about the voice. And everyone that ever heard him when he was 18, 19 years old knew he had a voice already. It didn't matter what he played, he had a voice. The same voice that you hear when he plays now. It's a connection with his spirit that he has, you know. Others are searching for. I am um, lying down in my bed. I had just come from a rehearsal, and I'm lying down in my loft bed in New York. And all of a sudden, I hear this music. It's like someone turned on a radio. And I, I jumped up in my, in my bed, and I said, where's this music coming from? Where, where's this music coming from? I never heard no music like this. In the next split second, I realized it was coming from within me. Now, what it was, it's, it was, it's like all music happening at the same time with no differentiation. Melody, harmony, rhythm, and a company with colors, okay, all at the same time. If you can imagine that, all the music that's ever been played, but it's just like, it's just like a reservoir. It's just like a, a pure reservoir of sound. I'm trying to master this instrument called saxophone, you know, because it becomes an extension of you, of your soul, really, you know, if you want to get down, it becomes an extension of your soul. So you have to master the instrument in order to get that across, because your soul is a very, very, very fine thing, right? It's a spiritual thing. <laughs> There 
there's there's a voice inside the music. You know, you listen, you learn to listen to music with a sort of like a third ear. A lot of people don't listen with the third ear, they only listen on the surface. You know, they're listening on the surface, you know, and they hear a lot of, they say, well, you know, the music is angry, you know, it's, 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 it's madness, it's, it's chaotic, you know. It's really none of that, man. You know, it's something else happening that you have to be able to hear. It's very subtle. It's inside the music, man. It's a voice, it's talking, it's a voice, it's higher beings inside that music, man. I started music 50 years ago. I started in uh, 1959. I think I was in fifth grade. And uh, it was uh, off of a uh, demonstration of the instruments they had in school, you know, in the auditorium. And I came home and I told my father I wanted to uh, play the drums. And he said, well, why don't you try the saxophone? I said, fine. I just went with it, no questions, you know. He loved, my father loved the saxophone, right, immensely, you know. And so I just went with that. You know? And I did a tremendous amount of, of listening on my own to jazz, you know, at home, you know. My father had all of these records on and on and on and on, and I heard this saxophone music. So uh, uh, for me to express myself through a saxophone is very natural. I've always, for me, playing music has always had a parallel with spirituality. From the very beginning, you know, there was great examples in Sonny Rollins and John Coltrane. There were great examples of that. And for me also, I took that on, you know, where uh, uh, spirituality runs parallel with playing music. Playing music is what we do, but the spirituality is who you are. You know what I'm saying? So there's who you are, and then there's the music is what you do. Those two always go together in life, you know, to make things uh, full. My life is centered around meditation. My life is centered around spirituality. Okay, so uh, for me, it gives everything more meaning. It gives the music more meaning. I came across Transcendental Meditation uh, in the late 60s, early 70s. I was 23 years old. I was living in New York. Boy, I remember uh, after being initiated, I used to wake up and be so happy, man. I said, wow, now I'm gonna meditate. It, it gave you another reason to uh, to want to be alive, to want to be living, you know? And and I remember I had a real, after after being initiated, I, w I went into a very, very creative period. So, you know, for me, it's meditation and then it's music. Now, uh, jazz is uh, one of the world's greatest treasures for sure. It is American uh, culture's greatest treasure as far as I'm concerned. Jazz is about being creative and always 
staying creative. You know, jazz is, is, is about being outside of the box. Jazz is about feeling outside of the box. You know, jazz is about asking questions outside of the box. It, 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 to express yourself, to be unique, you know, to, to have a, a unique voice, a unique style. You're dealing with music, you're dealing with infinity. There's no beginning, there's no end. It's, it's an ongoing, never-ending journey, actually. It's an ocean you never will cross. I would hope that people would get from my music the ability to be able to think deeper, to think deeper on everything. Hope that the music would be able to point people in a more spiritual direction, you know? And maybe stop being uh, so overwhelmed by materiality.